our colleagues in the UPND, starting from HH to the last man, lied to the Zambian people. And only two days ago, I think it was yesterday or the other day, the other day there was, there was a, an editorial comment in News Diggers saying that UPND lied over the reduction of pump price of fuel. So it's not only me saying it. Everybody is saying it across there. Okay? The man is telling us now he has gone to DRC to go and boost the trade between DRC and Zambia. Oh my God! DRC has been in existence. And the only beneficiaries of that trade are not Africans. Okay? Do you know, do you know that the 54 African countries, 54 African countries, their trade, trade portfolio with the EU is less than 2%. Less than 2%. What is it that we are going to trade with the DRC? What does DRC grow? If you know the economics, you know, of the, the democratic Republic of Congo. What do they grow? Not even a tomato, not even onion. Yes, they have minerals, but what do they grow that you are going to we feed DRC using the Kasumbalesa border post, where 90% of the trade there is illegal. Doesn't bring money, you know, to ZRA. And that has been going on, my friend, from 1962. When Congo became, Belgian Congo became independent, we now DRC. From 1964, when Zambia became independent, whom is he telling? You know, unless he's telling a chap who is 20 years old or 10 years old, that he's going to improve trade, and that's why he's going to DRC. There's no trade, any significant trade between Zambia and the DRC. Zero. To don't change you, the lives of Zambia. Don't you think that can be, you know, uh, rectified, seeing that has been happening for, for, for that many years? Uh, now that, you know, we have new leadership in place and try to find uh, a way to, you know, monetize whatever is going on at Kasumbaleza border. Uh, uh, Peter. And, and, and make sure Zambia earns more money from the exports that we, we make to Congo. Peter, you ought to understand the history. <coughs> you ought to read and understand the history of African countries. Their colonial history and their post-colonial history. If you, if, you, if you understand that, you'll be ashamed to make some of the statements that you hear from African leaders. Okay? I was watching, I was watching an Al Jazeera program which was a, a, an interview of President Paul Kagame of Rwanda. And the interviewer asked him, do you and President Museveni of Uganda talk to one another? And Kagame, candid as he always is, said no. We have border differences. So I don't talk to him. So you must understand the history of colonial Africa. And if HH understands, I'm sure in the field of economics, where, uh, uh, which is his field, he must have read a bit of history. He must have read about, a bit about, the, about the, even political economy. Okay? If he did, he can't stand at the airport and tell us that he, this trip is going to improve trade between DRC and... Like I've said... There is no production in DRC Buana apart from the minerals. That country is at war, and it has been at war since the assassination of Patrice Lumumba in 1963. It has been at war. It's a country that is unable to get any benefits from its resources. They have no infrastructure in terms of roads. I remember speaking to, to one diplomat after the election, you know, the election of, the, the last election of Kabila. Mm -hmm. And I said to, and I said to him, how, how are you, how did you guys certify the, you know, the election in DRC when less than half 
you know, of the registered voters. Uh, no, but, but the ballot papers didn't reach not even half the country. You know what his answer was? Winter, DRC is a very difficult country. There are places where there are completely no roads and you can't take any ballot box there for purposes of an election. You can't take. So the democracy that they are telling us about DRC is a facade. It's a charade. It's a phony. And yet, and yet, here is President Hagende Jilema who thinks that a country like that has trade capacity. Because trade means you are saying to us that let's trade with Congo, with DRC, so that I can improve the lives of Zambians as president of Zambia. That's mm -hmm. what you are saying to me. Yes. Okay? But I can tell you that I'm repeating myself. There is no economic, hardly, maybe not no, hardly any economic activity in the DRC that can impact Zambia. They've had the joint, uh, what do they call them, joint commission, permanent commission, mm -hmm. JPC, between, between Zambia and Congo for many years. The only thing that we see, people seated around a big table, others speaking French, translated into English and vice versa. They are meeting in Indola. After that, Kafuako progress. So, the would say. so, according to you, Mr. Kabimba, having us wanting to trade with Congo and it being beneficial for Zambia is, is, is a pipe dream. Not according to me, according to history. Not according to me. This is documented. But Can it be fixed? If, if you are going to fix it, don't start by dreaming that one trip can fix it. Don't start by dreaming. That's a dream. That's a pipe dream. To justify a trip to DRC and you say that I'm going to fix trade. That's, that's not possible. If you say one of my long-term objectives is to see how I can... I can get the little that Congo produces, mm. the little that Congo produces for the benefit of Zambia, maybe. But to give a press briefing at the airport and say, oh no, you know that I'm going away, uh, you know, because I have to pay a KETA score on President Shekedi and also, you know, see how we can boost the trade. There's nothing to boost it between Zambia and DRC. But this is a Would good market for Zambia at the end of the day, Mr. Kabimba. There's if, no if, system. If, if, you look at it, uh, if you look at it, the peasant farmers and everybody that, you know, has some sort of, uh, they rear chickens, uh, they sell their eggs. This is a huge market where Zambians can actually go and yeah, trade from. Yes, yes, I, ag I agree. You know, but we you know the... the, the the Zambia, Zambia into Congo, you know, thing. Do you know, do you know that the banking system in DRC is almost down to its knees? I can give you $20 here to send somebody, you know, to, to send somebody to Congo. It won't arrive there. You send it through Barclays Bank here, it will not arrive in Congo. So what trade are you talking about? You can't get, you know, an LC for importation or export, export of goods to DRC. Please read. Let me say, kind of read the history of DRC. And not just go there and be confined to a table, you know, and, and read the speeches with the, the Zambian flag behind and the Congo, you know. No, read the history of the DRC. And then you get to appreciate that, that statement. is hollow. Don't you think this is good for Zambia, though? Yes, from a Zambian perspective, regardless of whatever is going on in the Congo, that those are their problems. How but, can they be? How but, can they? but for us, as a market, because we are looking for a market, Peter, we want to sell our, farm, our farming products. We want to earn some money from from the DRC. Yes. So isn't that good for us? We do the trade. We sell to Congo. I isn't said, that a good market? I said at the beginning that ninety percent of the trade between Zambia and Congo, the export trade from Zambia into Congo, is illegal. Mm -hmm. Illegal in the sense that uh, there's no tax paid to ZRA. Okay? I'll tell you a story of a friend of mine who, who was doing a bit of business in DRC. He, say, he said to me, he was at the border one time, and uh, a man came with a truckload of, of uh, 200 goats. 
Okay? For sale. You know what he was doing? He was getting one goat at a time, put it on a leash, and walk with it like a pet through the border post. Apere kakuja. He comes back, puts another, go another goat on a leash. Apere kakuja. No papers, no nothing. It took him almost uh, three to four hours to take the 200 goats across. Then he goes there, no receipt, he gets paid in dollars, he walks back. Now, is that is that a trade that you are talking about that would benefit Zambia? No. I think the president earlier alluded to, to the fact that he recognized the illegal trade that happens, you know, uh, at the Kasumba Lesa border yes. force. And he says, this, we must find a solution to it and make sure that uh, government actually collects, uh, ZRA actually collects taxes from whatever trade is going on there. That is what, um, that is what I'm saying. His statement, his statement is correct. What I'm telling you is that uh, this has been an endemic problem. Kaunda left it. MMD left it, and I don't see a lying government like UPND fixing it. That's all that I'm saying. 